finally seeing the wood I want to see. That's plywood. There he is. Got a little bee buzzing around all my diamonds. And then we got bees and butterflies. That's a good indicator. More trash. What is this? A shoe. An old shoe. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to another video, miners, prospectors, and rock hounders. It's always good to see all of you back at the channel. If you're new to my channel, I'm Diamond Miner Ivans. Welcome. I hope you like what you see and you decide to subscribe. It's Friday the 13th, 2020, and I thought it'd be a fun day to come out here and dig for diamonds. I was down here yesterday probing at the South Trench. I found some really good crunchy gravel. That's what I'll be digging up today in this video. I've been receiving a high volume of comments lately and I try to get to everybody's comments and I appreciate everybody commenting on my videos but I'm unable to get to all of the comments but I do read them all and I appreciate everybody's support and I can't thank you all enough. Okay I have all my buckets in the cage by the south wash. All my tools are on the cage on the east drain. I do have this custom tool that I made and this thing right here really helps dig the gravel veins out really easy doesn't take much effort this is the spot right here i've got my tool that i made to help chop up the uh, roots and just the topsoil that's really muddy and nasty so this thing right here just really helps break up the material that way it comes off comes out in chunks nice to have this in chunks when you go to refill in your hole, it's just chunks of dirt. See that? Okay, I've already felt gravel. The gravel is very wavy down here. It's just, it just dips up and down. And right over here in this corner, my probe went all the way down. I didn't touch anything. So that tells me somebody's already dug all that out. And it could be more gravel at eight feet, but my probe wouldn't touch it. I'm not gonna dig it. But we got a lot of gravel right in here. And it's only about a foot to two foot down. So what this is, is a tamper from Home Depot. And I've added these rounded cold rolled steel and I sharpened the edges and I just welded it to the plate. Very, very handy when you're digging a hole. Digging in that mud, you can use this to clean off your shovels. And it's a very handy tool out here. cut out from a hole not even a foot down in spots and I'm already feeling gravel that's a little bit deeper there's a small thin layer of crunchy gravel right there and the gravel layer right here I didn't even go in two inches and I hit it so it's really wavy. So what you want to do is just kind of chop up this top right here with your shovel and remove all that fluff and expose the gravel. And then get the gravel in your buckets and you'll get diamonds. Okay, you just want to make sure you just dig into this. There's a little bit of gravel starting to show. So it wouldn't hurt to put that in your bucket. Just that thin layer could contain diamonds because you gotta think, before the part dug this trench out, you know, it was at least probably up to my waist or higher of material that they have dug out. Of course, I probed the top layer and it was really smushy because even when the material was up here, you had gravel, say that deep, 
and then just smushy mud, nothing. And then two foot down, more gravel and nothing. And then here we are, gravel. So you definitely want the gravel versus all this muddy, fluffy stuff that has no rocks in it whatsoever. You know, that's just basically nothing. So what I'm doing now is just taking my shovel and scraping the top of the gravel, getting all the fluff. See, there's a big rock. And then about a six, seven inches, nothing and more gravel. So just get all this fluff off. You can hear the gravel. You seen red jasper right over here. Here's a really good indicator. Nice and red. You know, there's all types of colors of jasper, but when the red like this, it's because it's collected iron, and that made it even heavier. So when you see red jasper, you can see diamonds just because it's heavier. It's a heavy mineral. Been at it cleaning the fluff off for quite a while. Have a good pile over here that's got gravel and fluff. I want to save all that. But you can see and listen. Now it's more and more gravel. And the vein with the red jasper looks like it's more over here going this way. About that wide, maybe a foot and a half wide. It could get wider, it could be deep. I don't know until you dig it up. Now I'm gonna get all this fluff with gravel into my bucket. They're not heavy at all. Fluff. fluff out next we'll start penetrating through the gravel layers and collecting gravel I probe a lot over here the gravel layer is thinning out but at the edge of my hole I'm getting a lot more gravel and it's probably the same stuff where the red is so I'll definitely start focusing more over here to collect gravel The stuff I want, it's about two feet down. So that's what we're trying to get to. Get this gravel plus what's two, three foot down. It's really crunchy past these larger rocks. And it's always good to go deeper. Lots of orange jasper. this one now that's a good indicator a huge jasper that's red and I'm talking red this is a pretty cool layer can't wait to see what comes out of it need more buckets see right here I'm getting lots of wood Oh yeah, a lot of wood popping up. It could be a log or a, a sheet of plywood. Hard to tell what that could be. Maybe a bracing from the old mining company from a structure they had, the conveyor or the, you know, part of their building, who knows. 
This could be Lee Wagner stuff. Artifacts from the Lee Wagner mining operation. Because he was definitely down in this area working a lot. Two, four, six, eight. Eight buckets. It's not even 10 o'clock. And you can see down here all the wood. That's starting to just pop out of the hole like crazy. All that right there is wood. Got a gravel layer. Just rocks pouring out of this thing. That's awesome. I can't wait to... Below that, I felt some really good crunch. That's what I'm trying to get to. This south trench is loaded with gravel. But not for long. All right, got a couple more buckets out. Just been working on this layer right here with all the red jasper and this bag started to pop out of the ground. Not sure what it could be. It's definitely a marker from the old mining days. Looks like we have some, somebody out here sure did like their white bread, enriched bread full of artificial flavors and preservatives. And don't forget your high fructose corn syrup. This is probably from the 70s or 80s. This could be some good old home fashioned bread with no preservatives. Let's see if we can read the uh, ingredients. Well, it's hard to read the ingredients, but definitely a great value brand. So hmm, that right there should say a lot. The old miners down here back in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, they would throw their trash in the hole to mark it. A lot of them did that because they wanted to know when they went back that they're in the right spot. After the park plows the field, it's really hard to find your hole and exactly where you were. One miner, Marshall Reef, he actually recorded every hole with a GPS, wrote it down in a book, he didn't have to throw trash in a hole. He's got it all in his book. We got to get that notebook. Still working on the gravel. The first layer, you see the red jasper. I mean, this thing is just loaded with gravel. And this green right here, check out all that green. Right there where my thumb is. That's pretty cool right there. Definitely a clay, green clay. You can just see all the gravel. Trying to get down past this layer and over to the side here, I found some really good crunch. It's about three and a half feet down. gravel layer is going straight down still seeing red jasper oh, yeah. more trash what is this a shoe an old shoe <laughs> old pair of shoes Reebok maybe. Oh no, great value again. <sighs> okay, so we found a shoe. It's starting to get kind of scary. What was the bread for? You know, you can use plastic for things, wrap around people's faces. <sighs> yep, still seeing rocks. Huge chunk of uh, looks like lamprite or maybe uh, volcanic tuff. It's a weird looking piece, whatever this is. All kinds of good stuff down here. We got here a big diamond. No, oh, but it's a really nice orange toned jasper. 
it doesn't look like it's going to be uh, bleached. So that's a really good indicator. We don't want that bleachy gravel. Oh wow, that's a really good layer down here. There's some more of that green. <clears throat> wow. Let me get you down here in the hole with me. You can see right there my finger is. It's just a green type of mud showing up. I'm sure it's got types of minerals in it to cause it to be green. You can see right here the layers. Ooh, wow, look at that red. Nicely toned red. You got orange, we got red. And that layer is all up along this wall going that way. So it looks like I dug into it, but it's more going that way. So now I got to focus undercutting getting that out with my special tool. I got five more buckets to fill up and that's gonna be it I'll have time to get them to my cage get this hole filled in call it a day check out what I'm getting into though more and more wood debris definitely some type of log it could have been an old slat board from when somebody dug a hole they had their slat board and they throw those in there to help fill in the hole. Whew, trying to get these last five buckets filled. Well, down to four now. Working on my step. And I was chopping out my step and check out this huge nail. Now that's a nail. like a lot of metal up on this upper stuff with some red jasper mixed in that was pretty crazy to see that huge nail pop out two more to go and I'm down in the hole check up this huge piece of wood it goes all the way across who knows how long it is but underneath that wood could be gravel I can definitely fill it all around it that could be from the old mining company. It could have been with this lunch bag, with the bread bag and that shoe. It could be from the 80s or 90s. I probed around that log. There's another hole and there's gravel all around it. Uh, it's about a foot down. It really gets hard packed, crunchy. So I can't wait to see what this stuff looks like. So I used the uh, destroyer, what I call that, to break up all that wood, and it did. Broke up all the wood and gravel. So it's time to get these other buckets filled up, start filling this hole in. It's about 10 o'clock, and I was able to find a few more buckets. So that'll give us about six more to go, and I have one over here with my water and my personal things 28 buckets one more to go and I've come up I've dug up this huge sandstone I'm, uh, I'm thinking it's sandstone and you can see right there that red jasper right there so the gravel layer was under that wood and that huge rock could be covering up some good gravel I probe down about another foot to some really crunchy stuff. I just won't have time to get to that. But I'm gonna work on getting this big rock up and then filling up my bucket with that red jasper and what's underneath it. All right, on the last bucket, finally seeing the wood I wanna see. That's plywood. Those guys would cover their good ore up with this plywood. They would stand on it so they wouldn't have the good ore sticking to their boots. 
and then they would also hide their gravel so when people come probing around they wouldn't feel a crunch they would just feel a hard thump and would move on because they wouldn't feel that gravel found that board right coming out of this stuff so there could be a plywood laying flat and it could have just been thrown in to help fill in the hole oh sorry i'm in the middle of a safety meeting eat my sandwich i'm gonna try to scoop some more of this up starting to get down to some good stuff now they got past that log and getting up underneath this big rock i've got three buckets to go i was able to just find them laying around now i had a couple in my cage so yeah i'm gonna try to get this finished up get this filled in times are ticking they got the buckets filled up finally getting close to 12 o'clock you see my cage isn't far here's the hole here is that huge chunk of sandstone and underneath it right up under there is plywood it's like they laid a sheet of plywood and then put that big rock on top of it to keep people out of that gravel that gravel past that rock and underneath all that wood is amazing i ran out of buckets i got about four or five buckets of that stuff which is right here just loaded with gravel and this hole is about four feet down so it's legal and here's the fun part getting all the buckets carried up and stored in my cage i have to go to my cage on the east drain grab all my boards that way i can stack my buckets on top of each other i usually have a sheet of plywood but yeah i like to use a two by sixes or something and you can lay them across the, and stack your boards on top of each other i got a few more buckets down there to gather looks like two four six eight ten twelve fourteen you got two four six eight ten twelve fourteen sixteen eighteen here hauling my buckets up to my cage and i found this agate right here on the surface it was a little ways down this whole south trench is loaded with agate i mean i've been finding pieces left and right check that out it actually has some crystallization inside of there in that cavity and it's just a really cool agate comet to win it that's right and there's a couple more pieces i have found so be sure to leave a comment subscribe Go check out my Facebook page and see who wins all the agate from this video. Okay, about ready to take a load up to the cage. Once again, I was hauling up buckets. Got all those out of the midfield and come across two more pieces of agate to give away. So that's three giveaways three separate winners be sure and leave a comment not the prettiest but it's still agate you could get that cut no telling what it would look like on the inside probably amazing plus it came from the crater of diamond state park we just got the buckets unloaded got my boards that were just laying behind some out in the woods out there people leave stuff laying around out here all the time so able to find some boards uh also you never know what you'll find by a cage that's the best agate of the day and i'm gonna give it away looks like we have four lucky subscribers that could win an awesome agate There he is, got a little bee buzzing around all my diamonds. Oh, there he goes, probably didn't see it. Anytime you got bees and butterflies, that's a good indicator. They love diamonds.
What's up everybody? I'm back at the Crater Diamonds. I'm here to get the rest of the buckets washed from the hole. We got 22 to go. All right, I'm on bucket 21, 20 something. I've lost count. And here's a nice piece of agate that I'll be adding to the giveaways. Let's see what else we have in here if we can give away. really seen nothing else no quartz just some jasper small pieces of lamp right here's some volcanic tuff possibly it's green here's another one beautiful piece of agate I'll be giving away I brought a brush with me to help clean all the cavities when I find conglomerate because there could be diamonds trapped in the cavities so it's always good to clean your conglomerate really good and I'm also going to give this conglomerate away with the agate giveaways really really old piece you just see all the small Tiny rocks fused together with iron. But yeah, this brush really helps. Got several buckets washed. Five more to go for the day. I have at least five or six in my cage. And this one right here looks like it's gonna be more of that material that's underneath the plywood that I found. That's always a good indicator. There could be some really good ore underneath it. And it could have been thrown in there just to fill in a hole quicker. And the hole was cleaned out. But I'm seeing gravel. So that kind of tells me that it was actually a board covering good diamond ore. The next bucket. Here is the top screen. It's all the wood. And this piece right here is the most interesting rock I've ever seen out here. It's like conglomerate that's been polished or it's jasper. This is very rare. Oh wow, a piece of glass. That's from four to five feet down. So we may be in some old mining gravel from the old mining companies. Maybe they left me something. Here's a huge piece of looks like calcite. I'll add that to the giveaway. Lots of red jasper all over. Loaded with red jasper underneath this board. And this is just the edge of the board. Here we go, here's something else of the smaller stones. Yep. I'm gonna have to dig another hole and get underneath the board. I know exactly where it's at now. Once I get underneath that board, we'll get diamonds. Three buckets to go. And here we are, probably bucket number 30. 28 or something nice chunk of quartz maybe a five six carat about all I see in this one I forgot these large jaspers were also in the bucket crazy and all that mud that thing's huge we'll save that for the flower bed Now that's a tater rock. Here's a close up of the diamond. I made a video finding this diamond on the center 
card that'll pop up right here. Click on that, it'll take you to the video where I found the flattest diamond in the world. This diamond was dead center. You can see right here, the diamond is so flat. Just look how flat that is. Very odd facets, but it looks pretty big like that. But once you turn it on its side, it's really flat. That's got to be the flattest diamond in the world. If we can get this video to 2,000 likes after two weeks of being uploaded, I will give this diamond away to one lucky subscriber that leaves a comment. Here's my 44th diamond. Turned out to be an eight point. Here it is under the microscope let's take a look at it on the big screen that's as good as we can get it to focus and you can see the facets and a lot of carbon and it's just not the best diamond i've ever found but it's still a diamond it's just a matter of time that you will find a diamond as well you just got to work the material Wet sifting is the best way. It's just a matter of time before you get your diamond. I hope you all enjoyed the video here at the Crater Diamond State Park. I can't thank you all enough for watching and all the support. Until next time, take care everybody.